this video we're going to talk about mixed numbers and improper fractions. In video parts of a fraction, part 6, we looked at a ruler like this and we were looking at all of those lines that break up the inch between the 0 at the beginning of the inch and the 1, which told us one whole inch. We didn't talk about anything more anything bigger than one whole inch. Now let's start thinking about something that's bigger than one whole inch. I'm going to pick up the yellow color because in the previous videos we were using yellow to bundle our sixteenths or our eighths into groups of four and break the inch into four parts. Here's one whole inch broken into four parts. Now, what though if I had a piece of wood that I was measuring? And actually, this is a funny thing. When you go to the lumber store and buy boards for a deck, the measurement for the thickness of those boards is this number. Now, we haven't yet seen a fraction that looks like that. What looks different about this fraction is the top number is bigger than the bottom. We know already that the 4 on the bottom says how many parts to make a whole. And we just noticed that over here. 1, 2, 3, 4 parts to make a whole inch. That's why we've got a 4 on the bottom. But the top number is 5. Now remember the top number just tells me how many parts do I have. So if the bottom says we're talking about four, uh, pieces that are of the special size that four of them make a whole. And the top says, I've got five of those. Well, then let's go back to the picture. Here's part number one, part number two, quarter number two, quarter number three, quarter number four. Where's quarter number five? Well, it must mean I've got this too, giving me quarter number five. There's five quarters five quarters of an inch. Now you can see that that's more than one whole inch. In the last videos we talked a lot about how one whole, if we're counting quarters, would be four quarters. We know that from quarters in our wallet. Four quarters make a dollar. If I've got four quarters, I have one whole dollar. If I've got five quarters in my wallet, then that tells me I've got more than a dollar. How much more than a dollar? Well, let's think about this now. Five quarters in my wallet means that I have one whole dollar and a quarter more. Well, we can see that on the ruler too. Five quarters means I've got one whole inch and one quarter more. Wow. So what we're saying here is this, that this line on the ruler right here, this line right here, if I have something that starts at the zero and carries on to there, so I've got this piece and this quarter and this quarter and this quarter and that quarter, I have five quarters of an inch which is the same thing as one whole inch and one quarter more. Now let's give these things names. There's names for these kinds of numbers that we're seeing now that we have not seen yet. Names for these things. So let's see if I can write them in a way where we can see them. This fraction, which looks like this up here, it's clear, where the top is bigger than the bottom, I can say this, it does not look proper. It does not look proper. The proper fractions that we have seen so far have a top number smaller than the bottom. And that's how I know the fraction is telling me about something that is smaller than one whole. Because remember, if the bottom number is four, four parts to make a whole. If the top number is one, I've got one out of four, less than the whole thing. If the top number is two, two out of four, less than the whole thing. If the top number is 3, 3 out of 4, 
less than the whole thing. If the top number is 4, hmm, 4 to 4, I have the whole thing. If the top number is 5, 5 quarters, I've got more than the whole thing. So this fraction that does not look proper, it does not look proper. I'm going to work the word proper here. We're going to use something we learned in English that I'm going to put a prefix in front of here. I am to say improper. Just like polite. If I want to say that somebody is not polite, I put an I am in front of it and we end up with the word impolite. So here we've got proper and when I want to say that a fraction is not proper, I call it an improper fraction. Improper fractions have the top bigger than the bottom. Now what do we call this guy? One and one quarter. One and one quarter. I'm going to give us another cleaner page here. Uh, let's get rid of this. So we have said so far that this fraction is what we are going to call an improper fraction. Improper because it is not proper. The top is bigger than the bottom. Now, not proper doesn't mean it's wrong. It's not wrong. It tells us something, but it's top heavy, right? The top number is bigger than the bottom. What we found out is that five quarters on a ruler or five quarters in my wallet is the same thing as one whole inch on the ruler or one whole dollar in my pocket and one quarter more on the ruler or one quarter more in my pocket. Five quarters in money is the same as a dollar and a quarter. Five quarters on the ruler is the same as a whole inch and a quarter more. This we called an improper fraction. Let's give this a name now. This we are going to call a mixed number. Now here's how I remember why we're calling this a mixed number. Because this number has got two things mixed together. It's got a fraction part mixed together with a whole number part. It's got two parts in it. The big number one, which is a whole number, because we saw that that big number one was telling me one whole inch. Here's the whole inch. I've got the whole inch and more than that. And this quarter over here was telling me how much more than the one whole. There's that extra quarter. So one whole inch and one quarter more. So here I've got one whole and one quarter more. That's called a mixed number. And the fun thing now is whenever you've got a mixed number, you're talking about something that's more than a whole. One and a quarter. Well, more than, you can do even more than one and a quarter. We could talk about, uh, I should not have gotten rid of that. Let's, let's uh, shrink that thing down. And let's talk about eighths. We were talking about quarters a minute ago. Let's talk about eighths. So, zero on the ruler. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths is one whole. But now we're talking about things bigger than one whole. Let's keep going. Eight eighths, nine eighths, ten eighths, eleven eighths, twelve eighths, thirteen eighths, fourteen eighths. Let's stop there for interest's sake. So this is fourteen eighths. I just counted them up. Fourteen eighths. That's an improper fraction that tells me how far I've come. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen eighths. Improper fraction. But I notice that I'm more than one whole, and a certain number of eighths more than one whole, so there's also a way to say what I have here as a mixed number. Here's my one whole, and what I have over on the other side is less than a whole, but I certainly have one whole. So I'm going to say that what I have here is also the same as one whole. That's that part over there. And how much do I have 
on this side. Well, I've got one eighth on this side, one eighth more than a whole, two eighths more than a whole, three eighths more than a whole, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths. I've got six eighths on this side. So this measurement right here, I could also think of as being the mixed number one and six eighths. One coming from the one whole inch over here, six eighths coming from the six eighths on the ruler over here. And when I put the one and the six eighths together, it brings me to the same place on the ruler as 14 eighths did in terms of an improper fraction. So you know what, whenever I've got more than one inch, then it's going to have two ways to talk about it. I can explain it as I did here with a improper fraction, but I could also explain it using a mixed number.